Welcome back. Um, we're, we're connected to Sumbo Badijuku, public affairs analyst, uh, who's going to be taking us through the effect that the monetary policy rate will be having on the private sector. Uh, good morning, Sumbo. Good morning. Yeah, let's have How your view you? on the bumping up of the monetary policy rate by the central bank. What do you make of this? Uh, the central bank will always have its reason for making such decisions. So whether or not they consider heavy stakeholders is another issue entirely. On the part of the central bank, they are looking at the end of year Christmas rush, uh, the political activities that is currently going on, and uh, what have you. But of course, uh, on the at the receiving end, for the manufacturing sector, uh, not much effect will be felt there because um, usually manufacturing sector used to wind down production at Christmas periods. They go on break, their storehouse will be full, so not much activity will be done. But for the service sector, that is when they enjoy their own peak period because so many people will be rendering services at this time. And those are the ones that uh, may likely be affected with this uh, uh, new inflation rate. And of course, they have every reason to express their concern. But the thing is, uh, I believe it's going to be a temporary measure that will not go beyond January because uh, the... By, by, by that time, the new currency will be in circulation, and of course, they will have to do everything to ensure that the distribution of that currency is not in that in any way. All right, looking at this uh, this point that you've raised now, so what will this spell now? Because we have people that have to repay loans and do all those other things. What will it tell for them? Now that it has been hiked, this is going to be like the fourth time this year alone that it has been hiked. What, do, what, is, what does this mean? Uh, it's, it's not going to affect New loans that uh, may have issues, and as I said, as I said earlier, for the manufacturing sector, they usually wind down activity. Now they'll be looking at the budget, the overall budget, and of course the policy direction of the government ahead of the year. That is when, as I said, by that time, even the CBM would have toned down the uh, the rates because uh, this one is done specifically for a purpose. Of course, in trying to go. Uh, in line with what is currently happening. You know, what we personally have even said it on your program said on several occasions that I don't really believe Nigeria should be having double digit uh, interest rates. It's not really uh, helpful for uh, the manufacturing sector that is just coming up, especially with the infrastructural deficit that they are also coping with. We should be looking at the direction of uh, the single digit. But of course, the banking sector too, they are in business and they would also want to do anything that would not, uh, they would not want to do anything that would not favor them. So that's right. why they, because the bankers are the ones, uh, majority of them are in the MPC that fix the street. They would always want to use their influence to put uh, policies in place that would favor their own, not considering the impact on the others. Yeah, you've, po you've pointed out that um, you are not uh, comfort, you, you don't understand why we're having double digit uh, interest rates. The CBN has said that this is will help, in, will help to rein in inflation. But we've seen inflation at 21.09. And this is like the fourth time again that they have raised the interest rate. What exactly is going on? How so? Why so? Because the Nigerian situation is peculiar. You know, all these policies will work under a normal circumstance. Inflation is as a result of you no know, persistent increase in the price of commodity due to too much money in circulation. But in the case of Nigeria, we are not having that much money in circulation. As a matter of fact, they are not within the bank pools, and that's the reason why they are trying to redesign the era. So we have the forex impact that is actually pushing this thing because it's affecting the logistic cost and increasing the cost of production, and that's where the inflation is coming from. Not as a result of too much money, per se, but as a result of the other factors. It's more of a cost push inflation. Yeah. That is what we are having, not demand push, okay. uh, not demand pull. If it is demand pull, this kind of policy would, be, uh, would really work. But if this is cost push, they should only look at the direction of bringing down the cost of production. But in, don't, don't, 
can. If, if I may come in here, don't. Really if I may come in here, sorry about that. Don't our, uh, yeah. our monetary authorities know this? And why then? Why are they still towing this part? I, I said something earlier that a good number of those who make decisions, especially those who form the monetary policy committee, are bankers. They are business people. They would consider themselves for, and that is why they are having this. Uh, we, we keep having problems from their own policy. They don't care what the impact will be. They look at it from just one direction. And that is where the problem lies. But I put the same at the door for the CBN governor. They will always claim they have intervention in place, they have this, they have that. But most of these interventions, how many of them are actually getting to where of serving the purpose that they were meant for? These are issues. Then how do they combine that? How do they marry it with the infrastructural deficit? All right. Um, so Mr. Now. Um, Sumbo, let's hold that thought here. We'll go on a short break now. When we come back, we'll continue looking at this thoroughly. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Sumbo Badijoko, uh, public affairs analyst. And he was walking us through the effect that the monetary policy rate hike will have on the private sector. Uh, Sumbo, thank you for joining us again. Please, uh, you, were, you, were making a, you, were, you were making an interesting point. Please, I'll let you land on that. Yeah, I was saying that uh, the, the bankers are in business and they have a real reason uh, to want to protect their own interests ahead of others. And that is why you see them putting policies in place that will favor the bankers and they will think about themselves. But at the level of the city and the governor, should also look at, uh, they should put, also put in, uh, into consideration other challenges that the other sectors are facing. For instance, the infrastructural deficit, the epileptic power situation. These are some of the things that are, are additional costs to their own, uh, or, or to their own expenses. And of course, all these things will determine the price of the commodity or the service at the end of the day. So, government should look at working out a way that the power sector would improve. Government should look at the direction of ensuring that the um, refineries are working. We keep hearing that Dangote will come up, Dangote will come up, up to now Dangote is yet to come up. And that is very, very unfortunate. And well, we don't really know when exactly that will uh, let me call, let me, let's look at this now, especially when it relates to people in the private sector. Uh, most of them are they are facing so many uh, challenges, higher taxes. Uh, they have to face energy, rising cost of energy. Now this, how will they be able to cope? Considering the fact that some of them have even threatened that they will leave the country, what how does what does this mean? Like we, we are, you know, we already said that. Uh, this they will start doing this in, in in by next by the next MPC. But looking at now till then, what does this spell for these people playing in the private sector? Yeah, as I said earlier, you know the private sector are in various categories. Yes. For the small scale sector, uh, there are a lot of incentives available to them, especially in terms of tax. I think there's an executive order that. Uh, uh, exempt those who turn over is less than 25 million yes. from taxes. taxes yeah. There's only those who are having earning higher than that that would pay tax. And of course, we have the, uh, those who are earning less than in the majority. So they will not be affected where they are concerned if the other fire is the cost of logistics. Diesel is damn high. Even those that do not use diesel, that use the petrol, petrol too is going up yes. as we speak. And these are the costs of the zero refining capacity that we currently have. That's why I said earlier that if they want to really make this policy work, other factors must also be considered. That's a, that's a very good one. And formulating policy. Yeah, that's a very good one. Now, let's have your final thought uh, on, on this issue. Well, uh, I would just express hope that, well, it's not it's just a temporary measure. This is targeted at you know, our usual cost wanting to increase everything at Christmas. That is the reason why they want to like, and this one, this particular Christmas is coinciding with the campaigns of politicians who will also go to the market, you know, hit some of 
modifying of the stock to distribute to their uh, uh, goods. And that's, that's, that's the same market where the ordinary people who could not afford uh, such huge amount of money with them will also go to. In order to make it well, that's why they are putting that policy in place. But, and the manufacturing sector, too, most of them will go on holiday. So by the time they are coming back, and the CBN relief, they are not planning to look at that direction. Should really look at it by the next MPC meeting. Do whatever they can to at least bring it down to the 15.5 that it was before. Uh, by, by that time, so that there will be a kind of hope going into the new year. All right. Thank you very much for sharing your opinion on the show, Sumbabali Joko. It's always a pleasure to hear from you too. Um, when we come back from the break, we'll be looking at this. Nigerian stocks have maintained an upward trajectory on Tuesday with the 0.6% growth. However, there are worries that the CBN NPR rate will drive away investors into other high-yield investment. Uh, we'll be joined by a stockbroker and a securities analyst to look at what the near-term effect that this will have on the stock market. Do stay with us. <laughs> 